Britney Spears' father, Jamie Spears, is fighting back in court documents saying he's done nothing wrong and he's throwing Jody Montgomery under the bus. I got attorney Christopher Melcher here to break down the new documents. Let's do it. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. I'm breaking today. Yes, Jamie Spears has re responded to Britney and her attorney filing new paperwork today saying, look, I did nothing wrong. I'm confused as you are. So I brought in Christopher Melcher. So happy to have you here, sir. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks, Andy. It's super exciting to be on the channel. So appreciate the invite. Yeah, good studio, man. I love it. I'm happy to have you here. I know you're on YouTube. You're doing some. Uh, you're getting into this story. I'm so happy to have met you. Uh, I love it because I have a full disclosure. Christopher had reached out and because I, I was looking for lawyers, and I and I got an email and I was like, can I make sure you're a real person and not working for any of these people? Uh, so I was happy to to vet and realize, yes, he is legit. I've called his office. He's a real attorney out in Los Angeles. So thank you for being here and and making me <laughs> vouching for me. Uh, but uh, so let's break this down. Because this just broke, and I so I, I I've just only started to breed it. We talked a little briefly together before I went live, but can you give us sort of a summary here as we go through this document? So this is from James's attorney fighting back. Is my is my summary correct in that he's basically saying, "Look, I'm not. There's no there's no cause for emergency. I've done nothing wrong." That's right. He's he is responding to the request to move this September 29th hearing date. Uh, Brittany wants it earlier. Jamie is fighting back to try to say that he's done nothing wrong and he's actually blaming Jody Montgomery, the conservator over the person for things um, and, and just really fighting back. So it's a it's a really interesting document. We don't have the ruling from the court yet on when this hearing date will be, but we definitely got Jamie's position on it. Do we, you expect to hear that today, though, but given now that we've gotten these filings, is it, it'd be pretty weird for them to not respond in the next few hours or so. Absolutely. The court will give a ruling today, and I anticipate that they will move the hearing date because although Jamie whines in here about there not being an emergency, eventually he says, well, fine, if you want to move the hearing date, I'll move the hearing date. So I, I think that the court will will uh, find some time earlier than September 29th to have this hearing. Right. So the hearing date will likely move. It's is your, your your expectation is this will likely move. You'll hear that next in the headlines. But what's really news here is Jamie's James, James, James response. I think so many James, Jamie's I'm getting so confused, uh, but he's calling himself James. Actually, there we go. Uh, James P. Spears. Uh, and so uh, I, I want to go through this document. It's, it's kind of short so we can sort of breeze through this together. So uh, conservator of the state respectfully submits his opposition to the non-appearance ex parte. So this is basically saying he's opposing this emergency hearing. Is is that what that means? That, that's right. This is going to be heard on the papers. There's no one showing up in court. It's, it's brought on as an emergency, and he's filing his papers opposing it. Okay, got it. Uh, and then here, I have a better document here I'm going through. So, uh, and then he goes through here sort of explaining that he opposes this request. Uh, he does not oppose the request to advance. Uh, new counsel Matthew Rosengart filed conservatives verified petition for suspension of removal of James P. Spears as conservator of the estate uh, and uh, petition for successor. Uh, although the petitions were initially set for hearing in, on December 13th, 2021, at a hearing in this matter on July 14th, the court had approved an earlier date, so the hearings on both petitions were advanced to September 29th. Mr. Rosengart was present in court, but made no request for an earlier date. I mean, is that a valid thing to say? Look, you had a chance to complain there and you didn't. Yeah, he, he, uh, but Jamie's saying is basically that Rosengart uh, sandbagged him, that there was an opportunity at, at, these, at the last hearing to say, hey, I, I don't want September 29th, that this was originally set for December, the, the request to remove Jamie. The court initially put it on its calendar for December, then moved it to September. The last time they were in court, it wasn't raised. And so Jamie's whining about that, saying like, hey, if this was really an emergency, why didn't you tell us before? And if something changed since you were in court last time, what was that that changed in the last few days? And ordinarily, those are really good arguments to raise. But Rosengart's been on the job three weeks. Right. He, he's still learning stuff every day is a surprise, probably when he's going through this. So I don't fault him. And I do think that the court needs to act click quicker than September 29th. And that's just too long to wait to figure out if Jamie's going to maintain control of this thing. Right. And so he goes on to say almost two weeks later, Rosengart filed this uh, application seeking to further advance the hearings to the earliest dates of the court, court's calendar on the grounds of the best interest of the conservatee. The application relies on the same declarations that were filed in support of the petitions, adding only Rosengart's own declaration, which is compromised of unstamped, uh, uns 
unsubstantiated vague accusations and false statement about Mr. Spears opposing a trip to Hawaii. Indeed, Mr. Rosen's declaration does not carry, uh, cannot specify what the wrongdoing is or the particular actors who have allegedly committed this wrongdoing. Accordingly, Mr. Spears affirmatively objects to all the declarations cited and filed in support. So this is interesting because he's basically saying, look, you rushed this out two weeks later, and now you're already throwing some, some stones at me without any actual proof. Uh, this is probably a, a fair legal response, no? It, well, sure. When, when I saw Rosengard's paperwork uh, yesterday, I, I noted that, I mean, there wasn't evidence to support it, really. Uh, he had a declaration of, of Matthew Rosengard at the end of some of the facts, but I, I'm not sure that this Hawaii trip was part of any declaration. Certainly, there was no Brittany declaration saying, I wanted the trip and my dad wouldn't pay for it. But Rosengart represented that that happened, and now Jamie's representing it didn't happen. And what's significant here is Jamie's denying it. He's saying that's false. Well, hey, it's a fact. This either happened or not. There, there was a request for payment of the Hawaii trip, and somebody said yes or no to it. And that's a fact that hopefully Rosengart's going to follow up on and say, hey, Jamie, you lied, or maybe Rosengart got it wrong. But what's significant is that here, Jamie's whining and saying, hey, Rosengart, you made an allegation against me without you know, evidence. Well, I don't know that Jamie has presented any evidence to support his denial of it. So right. he doesn't go and say like, well, here is when the when it was presented to me to pay for and I immediately paid for it. So they're both just basically slinging allegations against each other at this point. Right. And, and Rosengart's a good like lawyer. Like it would see it would be stupid. to. I mean, I have two thoughts, right? It's this is there's clearly a media war happening, too, that he's wisely, I'm sure, taking shots at. Right. But it would be yeah. so stupid of him to put something like that in the in a document without having proof or being positive about it. No, isn't that sort of rule one? Well, that's right. Bo both of them cannot be correct. So Rosengart saying, you know, the, the trip expense was initially uh, refused and Jamie saying never happened. So somebody's wrong. And, you know, hey, it's a minor detail in the scheme of things, but uh, that's the type of thing as a lawyer that I would pounce on because little lies are just as important as big lies in my mind. Right, and, and as a lawyer... As a lawyer, you wouldn't put a little lie in unless you had evidence to say it was accurate, correct? Well, that that's right. All we have uh, is our credibility. And once you lose that, uh, you know, at least in my mind, once you lied about something, you're lying about everything. So to me, I would I would definitely be seizing on that. Yeah. And whoever is telling the truth should be seizing on that to prove that one of them is, is incorrect. We hope I hope it's it's Britney's side is correct. But yeah, interesting, because now we're already it's already starting. The fight has begun uh, further. There's absolutely no urgency justifying this relief. Uh, Mr. Rosengard has alleged no such emergency. Uh, applicant must make an affirmative factual showing and declaration containing competent, uh, competent testimony <coughs> based on personal knowledge of uh, irreparable harm, immediate danger or any other statutory basis. For granting relief, um, if this matter was as urgent as Mr. Rosengart claims, why wasn't this application concurrently filed with the petitions on July 26? Your argument there is, well, because he just got on the case, he didn't know. He's starting to figure out there's a lot of shady stuff going is probably what's happening, correct? That, that's right. I mean, the ex party is essentially a 911 call to the court saying, I need help, drop everything, cut in line, do, do mine first. And you're seeing in that next paragraph that although Jamie is raising the decent argument that, hey, what's the where's the fire here? He then says, well, I don't object to advancing the hearing date. So, like, wh why whine about it? Right. Why not just say, like, hey, I'm cool. Uh, and you'll see in a footnote there that they're they're given some dates that they're unavailable. But um, it, fine. You know, he's just whining about it. But he is saying, let's move the hearing date. So that's why I think the court will will hopefully shave some time off of September 29th. Got it. So, yeah, there's the dates you spoke about. But then, yeah, so application would be, is entirely necessary. He's just basically putting up a fight here, a public response saying this is all unfounded. These are crazy. There's no reason for emergency. All of this implying that clearly there's a battle to be fought here. Jamie is not going to give up quietly, it seems, based on this document. But, yes, you are pointing out he's also seemingly trying to look like the good guy, which he's always trying to do, by saying Mr. Spears does not object to the advancing uh, next available hearing date on or after the 3rd, 23rd. If there is a date that works for the court, Mr. Spears will not object. Uh, what do you think is going on with the, the attorney there and, Mr. And, and Jamie, like in this thinking of filing this and whining, but doing, you know, saying we don't object? What, what, is, the, well, what is the move there? The the next part, um, the court need not consider the alternative request for suspension. And, and I think this is strategically why Jamie's doing what he's doing, because 
the the second request that Rosengart made is, hey, judge, if you can't move our September 29th hearing date earlier, go ahead and get rid of Jamie right now. Because we're not going to if we have to wait till September 29th for a hearing date, I want you to immediately suspend Jamie because we don't want to wait that long and have Jamie in control through September 29th. So mm-hmm. the counter move by Jamie was, hey, we don't even need to get to the immediate suspension request because I'm agreeing that we can move the hearing date up. Got so it. it was a nice kind of counter move by Jamie on that one. Right. So it's sort of they were hoping they were using that against Jamie's lack of response or, or all of this was sort of a, ta- a trick or Jamie has just sort of said, nope, I'm available. I'm waiting. It's, don't blame me for that. You know, don't pull me is what this really is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's so that's what this document here is. There's no uh, there's no other alternate need to suspend because I'm available and I'm down to have this uh, emergency hearing. Um, again, which feels like a delay tactic, if anything, right? Because as we've seen in, in Rosengart's whole thing and Brittany's well-being, like, why is he still there? This clearly isn't good for the conservatorship, right? So the fact that Jamie's sort of saying, yeah, sure, I'm here. I'm not going to admit to fault, but I'm also not going to rush to, like, leave on my own terms. Like, let's do this by the book. Yeah. Is that sort of what you think Jamie's doing? Well, that, that's what he's doing. He is buying time, and there is no way the court is going to remove Jamie today anyway. I, I, I mean, hey, anything could happen. We don't have the ruling. But the, if the court was really paying attention and wanting to do something, it could have, should have removed Jamie a long time ago. It had plenty of opportunities and times for the court to step in and do something. It took none of those opportunities, so I don't think it's going to do it today. It's just going to schedule another hearing date. And, and Jamie's saying, hey, I have rights I have rights under the law, and and that's true. But I think J- Brittany's rights are more important than his rights. Right. And and but that's what we're seeing right there. Right, because given that he's in charge of a conservatorship about that's her well being exactly. Her well being should be more important right now than his. Uh, all right. So go, zooming through the rest of this number three, there's no grounds exist for suspension. Uh, so he's saying the emergency is highly inappropriate because there's no there's no reason for this. Is that what this is? Um, yeah. So this next section, he's basically saying, I'm a great guy. I'm a great dad. I love my daughter unconditionally. I've always protected her. And so this is a rehabilitation he's attempting. He's saying, hey, when I got the estate, it was in debt and tens of millions of law, uh, dollars in lawsuits. And now we have, you know, 60 million dollars. Well, even if that's true, uh, what he's saying about the condition of the estate when he took over, there's plenty of people who think that the value of the estate now should be worth north of $60 million and are questioning with her earning history why she doesn't have more money, especially when she has her dad controlling her spending so tightly. Right. Right. The money's not being spent by her. It's being spent by his team and his lawyers and everybody else. Um, so, yeah, he's he's not none of this seems to make sense exactly uh, he's always looking out there's been no blemishes on his record except for that restraining order jamie against your own grandkids that wasn't a good look right <laughs> we, yeah. we seem to yeah. forget about that one uh he's got a lot of blemishes so he's he's ignoring a lot of stuff uh mr spears did all this while serving as conservator of the person and working hard with a team of professionals to restore good health reunites her with her children oh who she had lost custody of that and had no visitation and helped revive her career. What a monster. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now my emotions getting in that he's because I, I don't believe for a second he wasn't using that to, to his benefit to keep her working to the bone. Uh, so for him to be here sort of like playing like, hey, I was I was I was helping her reunite her with her children is sickening to me. Uh <laughs> well, there he's he, he's linking it. Yeah. He's, he's he's you know, we have plenty of links already between the conservatorship and the custody issue. But there he goes and links it again. Right. It, it almost if anything that goes against him, I think. Why? Why is he connecting that? He's he's trying to be the hero and savior of everything um, around her life. Throughout his service, uh, his sole motivation has been unconditional love for his daughter and fierce desire to protect her from those trying to take advantage of her. Well, you were. So uh, the conservatorship continues to exist, and Mr. Spears continues to do the job that he was appointed to do. Uh, all this is just him defending himself, which is just sickening to read. Uh, his request to suspend is based on untested testimony provided by Miss Spears. Uh, wow. So his daughter's lying is really what that means, right? Well, so what he's saying is, is that the the two sessions in court, June 23 and July 14th, that Brittany spoke were not under oath, as far as I know, that these were really weird and unusual proceedings, because normally when somebody speaks that long in court, there's there's testimony being taken for some contested issue leading to a ruling. This was more like open night, mic night. 
and they just said, hey, we're having June 23. Brittany wants to address the court. Fine. And she speaks. And you saw at the end of that speech, the same for July 14th. Thank you so much. You're very courageous. Let's move on to next business. And the, the, there was nothing else to, to do other than hear from her. So what he's pointing out here is, is that she made statements. They have she has not been cross examined. And it's it so they and there's been no findings by the court on whether what she said was true. So that is legally accurate. Um, and but he's certainly implying that he disagrees with what Brittany said in those statements. So this is still going to be a battle. Uh, and so here it's interesting because he goes and says uh, his request to spend based on that, on this un- uh, <coughs> allegations and events largely related to health and medical issues for which Jody Montgomery has been responsible for late 2018 and vague, conclusory and unchallenged declarations submitted by Lynn Spears, Jody Montgomery and Mr. Rosengard himself. At a minimum, Mr. Rosengard's suspension request raises serious and complicated legal and factual issues that require a full opportunity to be heard and cannot be resolved on a non-appearance ex parte basis. For example, Mr. Rosengart relies heavily on this unsupported hearsay of the medical team, believes that Mr. Spears must be removed. Uh, there's absolutely no explanation on any basis for this, but it seems to be related to the testimony provided by Ms. Spears. Uh, a wide variety of issues involving both the conservatorship and the person of the estate, including but not limited to serious allegations, including forced medical treatment, yada, 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 uh, personal limita- uh, limitations, personal rights, name a few. These issues regarding Ms. Spears' medical treatment are indeed serious, but Mr. Spears has not been in control of his daughter's medical treatment since late 2018. I'm sure Brittany's going to argue, Dad, this happened before 2018, no? Yeah, and I, I you know, definitely he's trying to change the way he's being perceived. The, the, I do agree with him about this medical team statement because Jody Montgomery in her prior filing had said the medical team supports removal of Jamie, but we don't know who is this medical team. Who are they comprised of? We don't have declarations from these doctors. So he is correct that there is this mysterious medical team that that Jody is saying is uh, if only, has the opinion. If only we could have done this in the conservator hearing back in 2008, right? Where if they could have asked who was, well, where's the, uh, you know, the actual tests? Who were the doctors that actually did these things to put her in this thing, right? I mean, there's there's so much shady stuff even back then that put her in this. And now he's sort of continuing same shady practice to say, well, we need to hear all the doc-. it's kind of frustrating, no? It is frustrating and it's a double standard because the court had no problem and Jamie had no problem with this conservatorship being put on her in 2008 without any even notice to her, without any medical evidence at all. And that was a complete violation of her rights, total failure of the court right there. But then now when when Brittany wants something, oh, well, we need notice, we need time, we need briefing, we need evidence. That's total nonsense because he never asked for it when it benefited him. He's only asking for it when it hurts him. Right. So, uh, Jamie, I hope you're watching. You're a scumbag. You're, none of this is helping you. I'm sorry. That's my opinion, at least. <laughs> so you're only making this worse for yourself. Uh, so these uh, matri- these are all uh, blah, blah, blah. It was Jody Montgomery. And now he's going bold, underline, along with conservatives, former attorney Sam Ingham. I do believe Sam Ingham is very guilty of a lot of things, I do believe, uh, who admitted uh, Miss Spears to a facility in early 2019, according, uh, but not limited to signing the uh, admitting documents. What's interesting here, so he goes in and blames uh, M- Montgomery, but I don't want to forget a point here. There's going to be a lot of finger pointing at a lot of these people in the probate court, right? Because there was Reva Goats who, who put on Sam Ingham and all these people that now Jamie's going to point at. Is there any point where the court system, in, in, its, in their attempt to cover things up, will almost want to send Jamie away? Do you think that's a possibility or do you, what do you what do you think on that? So so there's a lot of responsibility to go uh, around, but not a lot of accountability. And so there's they're definitely seeing the finger pointing and um, the court's response will probably be, hey, we were fooled just like everyone else. And and then punish the people who fooled the court. I don't really buy that because the court needs to to have common sense and look at stuff and follow the law. Its job is not to be fooled. And it allowed itself to be fooled because it only heard from one side of the case, not Brittany's side. And it actually supported removal of of Jamie, I mean, of Brittany's chosen counsel, Adam Streisand. So a lot, a lot of uh, blame to go around here. The um, so 
You know, and Sam Ingham signing off on an admittance document to put her into a facility in 2019. I, I haven't seen those documents, but, you know, look, I'm a lawyer for a lot of people. I don't just admit them into uh, mental hospitals. So I really don't get that. I don't think that's the role of a lawyer. Uh, so finally here, because I know and I have to be quick here because I know Christopher has uh, some calls he's need to do. I appreciate you making the time here. But this is where this is the most juicy tea, tea spilling moment uh, where basically now uh, Jamie is revealing that Miss Montgomery actually was be calling Brittany crazy pretty much. Right. Saying that uh, it was in. Uh, hold on. I want to get to that important part you were telling me. I think it's right. This was a call that happened in 2000. Uh, sorry. It's right. So here we're it is. Done. On July 9th, 2021. Mr. Spears received a call from Miss Montgomery in which she sounded very distraught, expressed concern about Miss Spears' recent behavior and her refusal to listen to or even see her doctors. Miss Montgomery pleaded for Mr. Spears' help to address these issues. Mr. Spears explained to her that he would do anything to help his daughter, but was limited in his ability since he no longer has access. Uh, but she also claims, right, you, there was a part here did I, did I, uh, that he wanted, she was suggesting a 5150 hold on her. Yeah, so that... Um that we'd have to go to page eight, the bottom of page eight. Oh, okay. And nine. That comes so that that's the brief, and then page eight and nine is Jamie's declaration that you're just scrolling through there. So if you just go, yeah, bottom of uh, paragraph six is where um, you know right Miss Montgomery acknowledged that many of her daughter's statements at the last hearing were not true, and attributed those statements to the fact that uh, Brittany is quote mentally sick. So this is Jamie alleging what Jody told Jamie on a phone call July 9th. So between the two, the last two hearings where Brittany spoke. So definitely throwing Jody under the bus and then uh, basically backing over her too, because now they're, they're adverse to each other. Right, and because this is interesting, because uh, Montgomery shared these details concerning my daughter's behavior uh, and raised potential, including a fifty-one fifty psychiatric hold, which raised my concerns. Conversation ended shortly thereafter. With Miss Montgomery said she would update me on my daughter's uh, condemnation and would follow up when she can do. So he's doing exactly what uh, I feel like uh, Brittany's attorney was saying he was going to do, which is he he, won't, he put him against a wall, which was interesting. Of like any defense or revealing of her medical conditions to justify any of this problem, these things would go against your job as conservator because that's not protecting conservatee. Um, is it? So he's sort of beginning to do that, right? He's putting out these vague sort of, I heard she's crazy from a person who suggested this. And now it's going to potentially, he's hoping maybe seep some doubt. Well, you know, we don't know what Brittany is crazy or not, right? We have to leave her alone, which has always been sort of the argument of to keep her locked in this, right? Is, is there a danger in him revealing this? Yeah, it is because he, he's now a combatant. He, he's supposed to be a neutral fiduciary, you know, uh, as a conservator. And now he's a combatant in this battle and he's fighting with with Brittany. He's fighting with her attorneys, fighting with Jody Montgomery. So basically, he's got to go. I mean, even if all these things that are being said about Jamie are false, he's got to go because he's no longer a neutral fiduciary. He is under attack. He's fighting back. It is it is it is not the proper role for him to be in as a as a fiduciary over her estate when all these questions are being raised about his conduct and he's now finger pointing back. So that alone is enough. And that may be Rosengard's strategy is to basically poke the guy and get him fighting back because now he doesn't look neutral. He looks right. like a combatant. And now we need to get rid of him. Right. I was just going to ask that. So I imagine they could use this to say, look, what he already is revealing to the public. This is this exactly was our problem. Uh, unsuspend, unsubstantiated, you know, accusations that my client is crazy. Uh, all, all of that is probably what he wanted and will hopefully help him uh, get what he needs. At the end of the day, what is your expectation of what happens from this? Do you think this will help or hurt Jamie Spears? It, it hurts Jamie. I, I was thinking who in their right mind would want to be in Jamie Spears's role as a conservator. He, he's not speaking to his daughter. Um, he's under attack by everyone. He, he all these allegations of abuse that his daughter's making against him. No one in their right mind would want that job. Any what he says, loving dad would say, I'm out. And the only logical explanation that I could see why he wants to continue is because he's getting paid very well to do it, number one. And number two, because he may be trying to hide something that a successor would come in and be able to uncover. Hmm.
that's scary stuff. Uh, but that's that's where I'm at too. It just feel and and again, it only justifies why we filed the emergency because I imagine Brittany's lawyer, as you said in, uh, earlier in the show, is only uncovering more and more to say, well, shit, this is something's something's not right here. Who is involved with what? And they can't and, and correct me, but they can't really, as he said, they can't really figure it out until Jamie's gone and someone else is in place to start doing the audit, the financial audits to sort of figure out what was going on, right? That that's why I like the first move, get rid of Jamie and then go to get rid of the conservatorship, because right now we have a guy that's fighting Brittany everything that she wants, including this document. So we got to get rid of Jamie first. Then we then Rosengart's got full control of the books and records, hopefully has this new successor trustee, the temporary one, Ruben, that'll be aligned with Brittany. And then it's smooth sailing, get rid of the conservatorship and then basically sue everybody. And then final thoughts while I have you, do you think because there, there's still this debate out there from a lot of people that we don't know if what Brittany's going through. We don't know what her medical conditions are. We don't know if she actually is indeed I don't want to use the word crazy, but, you know, mentally not fully aware or able to maintain this. Let's for a second, if even if that was true to a one percent, whatever, right? His, her attorney would be able to figure that out pretty quickly, right? Like her attorney would go into this knowing like, look, she's not crazy. There seems to be this is there's something really crazy here that this is still happening, right? Is, is there any could there still be any basis? We're all going to be gobsmacked to say, wow, we didn't expect that there is something wrong with Brittany. Is it is it possible at this point? Well, that's not the test. So crazy is not the test. It, it um, the conservatorship is an extreme remedy. You have to, to me, my test is. If, if I if I can't figure out within maybe a minute of conversation with an individual that they need a conservatorship, then they don't need a conservatorship. They got to be that that bad. And we heard Brittany speak on two occasions for like 20, 30 minutes. And she didn't sound like she needed conservatorship. Maybe she's got you know issues like all of us have issues. Yep. But uh, conservatorship is something way, way extreme remedy. This is for somebody who can't take care of basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, can't resist fraud or undue influence. So I think we didn't see that. So it's not a it's not a question of whether she has mental health issues. Um, It's a question of whether she can care for herself well enough that any adult would be able to do. And and so I don't see I don't see that in her statements. So I do think she gets out of it. And certainly there's so much pressure on the court that the court would probably say, hey, you, you want to be free from this? Go ahead right. and, and live in peace. And and then it's up to Brittany to make her own good or bad decisions, just like it's up for me and you to make our own good or bad decisions in our life every day. Well said. I'm glad I, just, I wanted to hear a legal expert sort of. And I know you could be a neutral party on this because there's still a lot of detractors out there that are trying to make that argument. I just don't understand it because I I can't wrap my head around what could excuse could justify this that she can't do what every other adult does and, and spend her own money. Um, Chris, we're so great to have you here. Thank you so much for being here, guys. If you want to go support, I'd love to have you back anytime you're willing. Uh, help, help help each other out. Uh, you can go check out his YouTube channel, The Law. There it is. I'll put a link in the description so you can support him and check out his coverage. Uh, come back anytime, man. So wonderful to meet you. Great. Thanks, Andy. Love it. Awesome. We will be back. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, make sure you go hit it. Check that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below on what you think about this one. Uh, How mad did this make you at Jamie? I want to hear it all in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back with more coverage here on Popcorn Planet. And don't forget, hashtag free Britney. It's coming. I feel it. It's coming.